everybody, and welcome to episode 99 of the Self-Publishing Roundtable, the podcast for indie authors by indie authors, where we discuss today's topics and issues that matter to the business of the self-published author. I am your moderator, Wade Finnegan, and my co-panelists, as always, are Michelle Reed. Hello, Michelle. Hello. And Xavier Granville. Yellow Internet. Uh, our special panelists for this episode are best-selling New York Times and USA Today authors, Kristen Harbour and Zoe York. Hi, ladies. Hey. They're, they're old pros. They've, they've been on the show mm -hmm. a few times. So, um, Before we get started tonight, even though I don't haven't seen her yet in the comments, but hopefully she'll come back and listen, I want to fire out a special shout-out to Kate Morgan for giving us some social media love last week. She made note of it to me that I was maybe maybe harassing people a little bit about it, but hey, it worked for her, right? So everybody else needs to leave us a, a review, uh, give us some social media love, please. It really helps the show. Uh, maybe keep us on air forever. Well, you know, forever, but anyway. Forever. Uh, forever, yeah. Um, so please do that at the end of the show. And of course, everybody watching live, if you have questions for Zoe, Kristen, or any of us, please leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to get them in. Um, we appreciate our live viewers very much as long with our listening uh, public on iTunes. Um, real quick too, I'll mention this at the, at the end of the show too, but next week is a very special episode. episode excuse me. We have <laughs> the 100th, 100th, can't believe it. Uh, hard, to, hard to believe we've made it that far. So uh, put it on your calendars. Uh, we're going to do some special things next week. Uh, Erica Conroy is going to help us host. Uh, we also maybe are going to pick out some random viewers uh, from the audience and plug them into the show. So you might have a chance just to be on the roundtable without even actual formal invite as long as you're watching live. So come check that out. And, uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So this week uh, our topic uh, is writing conferences. Uh, how do you get the most out of them? Uh, what should you expect when you go? Uh, what are some things that maybe uh, our two uh, special guests uh, would recommend that you prepare for, those sort of things. It, it does seem that romance uh, authors have the writing conference thing down, so <laughs> maybe better than uh, some of the others. So uh, we're, we brought you guys on to uh, pick your brains about all that good stuff. So thank you for being on the show. Appreciate it. All righty. Uh, so first off... Uh, I think I'll start with Zoe just because, I don't know, because she, you're first one on the line down the bottom. Um, you recently attended a, a conference, had some good things to say about it, so uh, I'll have you start off talking a little bit about what that conference was uh, and what sort of things were very cool about it. Yeah, I mean, um, in, for this conversation, Kristen certainly got a lot more experience than I do because I just attended my very first conference, um, and it was a small one. It was a reader event. And it's important to understand the difference between a writing conference and a, and a reader event or, or an author reader event. Um, and sometimes reader events are only a single day or sometimes they're more like a conference and that's what this was in Ottawa. It's called Romancing the Capital and it was organized by a romance author, Eve Longley, um, who's a Canadian and she lives in Ottawa. And Eve is one of those authors, like Laurie Foster, and um, for the romance people watching, um, Laurie Foster's Reader Author Get Together is a phenomenally successful event that Eve modeled um, RTC on. Uh, and Eve is one of those authors like Laurie who has a really active fan base. And she has a decent sized fan base actually in Ottawa. And as romance authors, particularly those of us who are still growing our fan base, often our fans are really widespread. and. And so we aren't necessarily confident enough to organize something for ourselves. But Eve has a, a big enough group of fans in the Ottawa area or people who'd be willing to travel to Ottawa that she decided to put together this event. And it sold out. It was, um, it, it was, at first it wasn't so popular with authors. Like, it took her a while to get authors on board. But readers were, were very excited about it. And um, it was a nice mix of... Um, stuff that was focused for authors, like craft talks and, and business talks, and a lot of really fun um, sessions for readers, like build your own romance cover and um, author reader speed dating and stuff like that. 
So for me, it was an amazing eye-opening experience because I'd heard mixed things about conferences. Um, sometimes on Facebook, you see drama, that sort of thing, and there was none of that at RTC. It was, it, it was hands down um, better than anything I could have ever imagined. And I left me with reader friends, new reader fans, and a whole bunch of writing connections. So I went to Ottawa, which um, I'm in London, Ontario, which is halfway between Toronto and Detroit. Ottawa is eight hours away. I went to Ottawa and I met six writers who are all within like a 45 minute drive of my house. And now we get together at Starbucks for coffee. That's and awesome. Yeah. So that was like the, that was, I mean, it was all awesome and I could go on for like the entire hour about how awesome it was. But <laughs> that, that one to one connection with other authors is the number one best thing about the whole conference. Oh, very That's cool. worth it right there. Yeah, and, and already I'm kind of thinking of myself, a lot of it I was thinking of it as re more reader-driven uh, in a lot of ways because you want to you know, find ways to, to get new readers and that sort of thing, but I love it that you talk about it, making connections you know, within the business, so that's, that's really cool. Um, Kristen, what's, what are one of your favorite concepts? Like Zoe said, you're a little more seasoned and, and gone to a few more. What, what's one of your favorite ones, and what do you like about it? Let's see. Okay, so I'm not that seasoned. I've actually only been going to a couple of these Hermes conferences maybe now for two or three years. So my last big conference I went to was the RT uh, convention conference. And that is like readers, industry folks, retailers, aspiring authors. Like it was just crazy cool because and I, it was my first RT. So uh, I didn't know what to expect because I knew the models were going to be there and you never know how that's going to go. And then um, thousands of readers showed up, thousands, and it just it blew my mind. Um, all of my vendors were there, so I had the opportunity to talk to them. Um, industry folks, we put together panels. Um, it was hands down one of the coolest things that I've been to because it, it put readers together with aspiring authors or authors that just published. Um, it started a conversation with bloggers that, you know, you, you see these mega bloggers uh, on Facebook and you kind of put them on a pedestal like, oh, you know, you just you want to reach out to them and then they're coming up to you and introducing themselves to you. And it really put, like, it made these people real. And that was just one of the coolest things I walked away with was, okay, you're a real person. You're not scary. I can pitch you. I can, I can send you, you know, my, my arts, my e-books. Um, because sometimes you, the, the, like the big reviewers you think are just, you know, they're not people. They're just, you know, these entities that are just so powerful. And they're just real people. So it put a name to a lot of, um, a lot of like, blogger, Facebook people. Um, and then, you know, just the connections and the people that I saw at RWA before that I was able to kind of relax. It's not as business focused at RT. So, you know, we were able to kick back, have a drink, talk about what we're, what we're doing next, what's working, what's not working, whereas RWA is just really business focused. And, um, you know, it's, it's meeting to meeting to meeting. You go there, <clears throat> you pack all of your schedules, There's, it's nonstop. And when you walk away from RWA, it's exhausting business-wise and, and re-energizing, but it's just a totally different world. So I was stoked to go to RT. I mean, it just I can't wait to go back next year. Next year is in Vegas. So bring on Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Some interesting stuff could happen there, right? <laughs> yeah, by, by the way, that's what... That's how the rest of us feel about like you and Zoe. We're like they're real people. They're not. They're not scary. Yeah. We're like the most approachable people. I, I think Zoe. I think you're just. We could just. We could just talk forever about anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something about these conferences is that I, I've heard because I haven't been to RWA. Um, I've heard that there is like you know the superstar authors like you can't go and sit with Susan Elizabeth Phillips for lunch. But for the most part, mm -hmm. there's way less hierarchy than you think, and that was definitely true for me in Ottawa. Um, you know there were there were some really really successful authors in Ottawa, and they like a hundred percent 
everybody was equal. It was um, readers and authors, and it was just, you know, it felt, the one in Ottawa felt like a wedding. You know when you go to a wedding and you catch up with people who you don't actually ever remember meeting before, but by the end of the night, you know their entire life story, and you're, you're going to see them again at the next family reunion or whatever? It felt like that. That's 100% what it felt like. That's great. You know, it's interesting you bring up um, Susan Elizabeth Phillips because she taught a class at RWA, and I remember thinking, God, you're a genius, and you're sitting here telling us all of these, these like, what I would consider, you know, insider tips, and she's just spewing information that my hand can't write down fast enough. And it's so cool to be in the room with these women that are just powerhouses, and, and these conferences put you in a position where you can raise your hand and talk, and she encouraged it and, you know, brainstormed back and forth. How cool is that? So maybe not sitting down to have lunch with her, but yeah. the woman and all of these women that or, and men are just, they're accessible at these conferences, and how cool is that? Yeah. That is awesome. Um, Kristen, you made a point about the being RT and RWA being t two different types of conferences. Totally. How would you mm -hmm. prepare for each one? What, what sort of things would you want to make sure you accomplished if you were going to this for the first time, either one? Okay. So RWA, I've been to three RWAs. My first one, I was unpublished with a goal to meet the editors that I was pitching. Uh, I left that first conference walking away from um, the editors that were interested in my stuff, and, and I decided to self-publish after that. Then the, um, the next one, the second one, was learning everything I possibly could from people that had been in my position and did well. So what did their covers look like? Who were they talking to? What did they think about art? What did they do with their series? Like every single possible piece of information, I just I wrote down everything and, and created my business plan. Um, and then my third RWA, after I kind of already had an established... Um, series and it was selling well. Um, I focused on the relationships that I had made through social media, through previous conferences, and with my retailers. And um, the retailers aren't scary either. They want us to be successful because then they're successful. And there's a lot of different ways to uh, meet them. A lot of times they're out there on social media or talking to other authors that they have relationships with and wanting to, uh, you know, set up meet and greets. And then sometimes they're just around. And it's really kind of easy to pinpoint who those people are um, because everybody wants to meet them. <laughs> but they're friendly. They're super friendly. I've not met a single retailer that will not sit there and give you their card and talk to you for a minute or two. Um, and then my fourth RWA, I'm presenting, and I think, no, you're, no, you're not, not this one, but, um, you know, so it's kind of like this weird life cycle of RWA conferences. I feel like I've done the life cycle. <laughs> what, what are you presenting this time around? Okay, so I'm presenting um, one with uh, Kim Killian on branding, one with Rena Aubrey, and with what is it, zero to six figures, how to establish an audience when you have nothing, like no audience whatsoever, which is where we both came from. And the third one I'm doing all by myself, two hours on Saturday, <laughs> it's called How to Be Your Own CEO. So all the boring stuff that nobody wants to um, talk about. And it's like after lunch, I'm like, how am I going to keep people away? <laughs> so it's two hours after lunch on Saturday when everybody's exhausted, and I would be like, let's get out our spreadsheets, guys. It's going to be great. Um, Michelle so, would love that. I know. That would be my favorite one. <laughs> um, but in RT, how did I prepare for RT? Swag, man. Like, I uh, figured out, you know, who I knew was going, what books that they were going to want, so people pre-ordered. Uh, we ordered swag out the wazoo. Sarah, who works with me, was like an overdrive. We were printing and shipping and uh, best friends with FedEx. So we sent down more stuff than I possibly thought we could ever need and got, got rid of most of it. But the readers down there really wanted swag. So um, What is the purpose of that? Because romance um, authors on my Facebook feed, they, they go all out. And it's like 
it's really nice stuff. Right. And, and it's see, beautiful. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even like that into swag, but I, I think the point of swag is to start a conversation. So, okay. um, you know, some people have uh, believe that, you know, you give a piece of swag that they'll keep forever. Like they'll put um, the magnet on their fridge or whatever. That's not really what I think. I think it's more mm -hmm. to like establish that initial conversation. Because, yeah. you know, if I can tell them to go get my perma-free books, I have two perma-free books, and get, yeah, I've started the conversation, then, and they remember long enough to get to their, their Kindle or their computer, then that has, the swag has done its job. So. Yeah. Okay. What, I went and saw Denise Grover Swank, and she gave me a bag full of stuff, and I was like, yeah. like, like, stuff for my kitchen and everything. The girl next to me at RT, uh, she's amazing. She had these beautiful bags of uh, candy and swag, and she killed it, man. I mean, she <laughs> and she was—I think it was her first RT also, but it might have been her. I don't know if it was her first time or not, but she had people coming. She blew me away, and I was, I was sitting next to um, Sharon Hamilton, and she had uh, her pirate narrator with her. <laughs> and I think we were both very impressed with the woman on the other side of the bag of swag, and Olivia Hart. Mm -hmm. could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But she, um, and she killed it. She had great swag. Yeah. That's and it pretty worked. cool. It That's really pretty worked. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Zoe, did you see a lot of that uh, at the conference you were at too? Was there a lot of giveaway type of stuff? Yeah. So, so the conference that um, I went to in Ottawa had two types of giveaways. So there were dinners included. So at each of the two nights, Friday night and Saturday night, there were a lot of authors who gave baskets away, gift baskets away. And I think that actually, that went over really, really well. Between the two nights, a really high number of the readers at the conference got a gift basket. So instead of spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on some a little something for everything, for everyone, um, an author could spend like 40 to 100 bucks on a single basket for one reader, but then that one reader might become your super fan, right? So it's like, a, it's just a different kind of investment. And if they're not a super fan, they might share it with their friends, I mean like the other people at their table, or you know, if it's not necessarily your genre. But I, was, I wasn't sure about the gift baskets, um, and after going to that conference, I was a convert to that, to that kind of giveaway. I was really impressed with both nights and the reader reception to that. And then on the Saturday afternoon there was a book signing and so lots of uh, lots of authors had swag at their table and we also sold books. And so I had, and a couple of authors who were coming from the states, I should say this, they, um, they were concerned about the implications um, with the Canadian Revenue Agency of carrying books across the border and then selling them here. So they gave their books away for free and that was very popular, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, and and but you know that didn't impact on those on readers buying books from those of us who were selling our books. Like I'm Canadian, so that wasn't a concern for me. Um, I sold more books than I could have possibly imagined at that book signing. I brought a giant diaper box full of books, and I told myself, you know, we're driving. Um, no harm, no foul. If I bring them home, it's not a big deal. Like I don't have to pay for overweight luggage or anything like that. And I brought back six little books. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. So that, a diaper box? See, I totally relate to that because I fill up diaper boxes. <laughs> That's such a mom reference of diaper. I know, boxes. like two diaper boxes. You know exactly what that is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Washington romance the writers uh, chapter had a. Um, had like a dinner thing. Um, it was like a cocktail party, and it was awesome. And the uh, the giveaway was the centerpiece. So yeah. each like I don't know if it was like 50 authors, maybe a little more than that, at this like super swanky, trendy restaurant. We each had a table. We um it was like ten a ten top, and we contributed ten bucks or whatever. And my table was ten of us. It was like near Halloween, so we put together this like Halloween theme. And then the reader, a reader won the, the centerpiece, which I thought was so cool. And they were so stoked. It was like yeah. Halloween book themed. It was the witch was holding a book and a broom. It was super That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, and then the, the swag that I did for that, and, and I 100% agree with what Kristen said, the point of the swag is just so that they remember you for however long it takes them to get to their computer. Um, 
and so I did wristbands, like silicone wristbands. Mm -hmm. Said Zoe York, um, book boyfriend, all access pass. And then I oh, told them, as I gave them the book, the, the wristband, I told them what books were free. I pointed to the paperback so they'd see the cover. Mm -hmm. I had two free at the time. Um, the same thing. And I saw a huge spike in my free downloads that we had. Obviously, way more than the people at the conference. But there were some people, like bloggers, who I told them about a free book, and then they That's went so cool. and on their social media. Like, I saw my, my free downloads more than doubled over the course, like, over the weekend. And it was sustained over the three days that I was there. Wow. So, if you think about it, it's the ripple effect. So you yeah. have 10 people download your book, it, it rises in the charts, other people see it, it's all about discoverability, it's eyeballs, it's getting eyeballs on your, on your perfect book. So it's great. Yeah, That's I wouldn't awesome. go overboard with the swag, but that was definitely a, a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know what swag is that might be listening, is that like bookmarks and, like what, what did you do? Bookmarks um, and magnets or... Yeah, it's a bookmarks, magnets, candy, little books. Like some people give away book, like like a mini book. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tote bags, t-shirts. I feel like I'm reach some swag. I, I feel like I should be able to like, get some. Mine, I, actually, most you of my swag is at my assistant's house. Most of my swag is at my assistant's house. Um, just, I don't know. I can outsource the clutter that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a good thing if you can outsource the clutter. So yeah. step one, get an assistant. <laughs> just everyone should step have two, one. give her all of your crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see, I have dog tags, which are huge, huge hits. Super expensive, really worth it, uh, in my opinion. Um, I want to do bracelets. I think bracelets are, are badass. Uh, bookmarks because they have the, all the books on the back, because they put like a little heart next to the ones that are perma free. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't have books, but I made like little uh, like little mini books, but I made pamphlets, which look great. So, um, and it's the perma free, and it's also series starter that it has a little bit of the book that ends on a hook. So, That's good. Yeah. So my girlfriends, my crit partners have super cute keychains. Um, one of my JB Salisbury, she has uh, like nail files or, or um, she has all kinds of stuff. She has all kinds of stuff, yeah. Uh, bottle opener, she's like because it's a conversation starter, you know, mm -hmm. it's always on your your keychain. So um, there's what else is there? I did lip balm. So yeah, chapstick is cool. We um now the, what for for RTC last year, earlier this year, um, in addition to giving stuff away at our table, there was also a bag, you know, to give into each. Um, Reader as they arrived, and so on the Friday, on the Thursday, we all could put stuff into the bag. So I put lip balm into the bag, and I don't. The, honestly, I think I prefer to give my swag to people who come around to my table as opposed to like into a bag. But they mm -hmm. like getting it, so it's kind of like you have to choose. You know, like you want something, but not too expensive, one for everybody. But the lip balm, the lip balm was good because it was something usable, right? A consumable for the course of the conference, and then every time they used it, you know, they... That's, that's my favorite thing that I've gotten from authors. My personal favorite is the chapstick. Yeah. I don't know why. And, and I, I think like, you also want to think about who your target audience is, because some um, people swear by eyeglass. Brand by what? Thing. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the um, little, the, the silky thing that can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not going to fly with NA readers at all. But if, if that's not your demo, then, then that might be something cool to look at. Yeah. Hmm. I always yeah, think cool. it's cool when they make the necklaces, but I would imagine those would be really expensive. Yeah. With, like, the little tiny versions of your book on them and... Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I did that. Um, not, And this is, this is another thing, is that swag doesn't have to be on a grand scale. So I made some glass pendants that had words. Yeah, yeah. And I made, I only made six of them. Um, and I gave them to my super readers. So there oh, were... Oh, I thought you made a ten. Well, no, I didn't make a ton of them, yeah. So there were three people who came to Ottawa to see me, <laughs> which is like, ah, oh my god. <laughs> um, and so we went out for lunch, and I gave them necklaces. That's great. I have That's awesome. Bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like the super readers, you can spend some cash on because yeah. they're they're your they're your bread and butter. They pimp your books. They they go to Ottawa for you. I mean, they they do what it takes. So Is that what Jamie they had those like anything they want from me. That I saw Jamie had like bedspreads. 
That is on, um, that's available for sale. But yeah, people buy them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's crazy. I'm just like, what? Uh, Society Six is a, uh, what is that like? It's like a cafe press, but it's more like designy. Mm -hmm. um, or like a Zazzle, mm -hmm. but more like stylish, I guess. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Zazzle, maybe Cafe Press makes Red Spreads, but they make the, the Society Six stuff as really cool stuff. That's so neat. That's awesome. Michelle, wait, before we forget, we had a question from the site, right? Jason, yes. I think. Okay. I'm looking. Catch, catch it for me. <laughs> okay, what's more beneficial, the seminar workshop, and mouse isn't working, the seminar workshop panel tracks or the hallway track? What's the hallway track? I have no idea what he's talking about. I think, well, I think the hallway track is like when you go to the conference, but you just hang out. It depends on where you are in your career, I would say. Okay. So explain that, Kristen, because I think that's important, but I mean, the explanation there. So if you already have, in my opinion, if you already have a solid understanding of how you want to move your books, are you going to self-publish, are you going to try to do something hybrid, are you focusing on a traditional career, then you don't need to go to the career tracks or you don't need to go to the newbie indie tracks to see, you know, what is KDP, what is Kobo. So if... Um, if, if you know a lot of what's on the agenda and you need to get FaceTime with your retailers, make relationships with people you want to cross promo with, then, then I would, I'd work the bar. I, I'd sit in the hallway and, and track down those people that are, um, that, you, that you have something to give and they have something that you can, you know, learn from. Yeah. So. And so um, at RTC, on the Friday and the Saturday, most of the sessions were for readers. There were a handful that were not um, kind of craft oriented or more just cerebral conversations that I went to. There was an amazing one by Nathan Smith on um, LGBT literature, which I got a lot out of. But um, out of the two days, I only went to three workshops, and I was, or I was like presenting two of them. So, and then I went to Nathan Smith's. The rest of the time I sat in the lobby, which was, it, the lobby was on the mezzanine level. Or I, I sat on the mezzanine level, like just outside of the rooms. And when readers would come and sit next to me on the couch, I sat there writing because I'm a freak. Um, and they would come and they would sit next to me. I'd close my laptop and I'd ask them what workshop they had just come from or what where they were going next. And we'd have a conversation. Um, and writers came and sat next to me and I talked to them. And then the, the meals. So lunches both days were with different people, but like big groups of people. Drinks before dinner both days. The night before was an author dinner. Like that was why I went. All of those conversations. I Are didn't those get all them. included. Uh, so so the meals, sorry. I think Chris is a little bit on the leg, so it's, it's, that's right. So, was the meals included, Zoe? First, we'll ask you that so question. Dinners were dinners were included in the conference. The lunches um, and the and the drinks <laughs> were the, the they were you know pay for your own. Um, it was the hotel was next to a shopping mall, a walking mall kind of thing, and there were tons of restaurants, so you could go to any of the restaurants around the hotel and there would be a group of writers, or readers, or both. Okay. Kristen, what were you going to say? Oh, I don't remember. Um, let's see, you know what I, I would say is I don't do well in those situations where it's like a big meal and you have to find a seat and or whatever, so like I, I do really well when it's like hallways and you're just you know, you talk to whomever, like you have a set meeting, but the idea to walk into a room where there's a hundred people and you don't know, like, if somebody who's, like, super famous or is, like, the first time they've ever picked up a romance novel, I don't do well. So, like, mm -hmm. my suggestion would be, like, find a buddy, like, day one, hour one, find somebody. Because there are a hundred people there that are feeling that same thing. And to, like, have somebody that you could recognize in a room or a couple somebody's and just it's so cheesy, but just like smile at people. Like, <laughs> inside, when I go to these things, like I'm shaking. I'm like, oh my god, who are these people? Like, what if they're like some super duper famous, important person who's gonna think I'm stupid? Um, but you just smile, and they smile back, and you talk. Like, oh, that was fun. What did you do? Just like Zoe said, what workshop did you just go to? Where are you going next? And it's it's so easy to be intimidated, but just just 
I'm going to talk back to you. And then you find you're eating, you're not puking in the court, everything's going to be great, you're not nervous. So this conference is going to be a lot of fun, even when it's like you dread it. Because readers are sometimes introverts. Oh, yeah. Readers and writers, too, right? Like, the whole, it's really, it's like between two and a thousand people, and you're all introverts. And there's like ten extra. <laughs> no one wants Everybody's to talk to anyone else. Like, they're like having the most important conversation ever because they're too nervous to look up. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. There's um, a recorded meeting right now. This is like every conversation I try to have with Wade, and he's like, no, nobody else talks like that. And I'm like, mm, I swear. <laughs> So um, I, I'm going to um, Emerald City, which is a, a regional RWA conference in October in Seattle. And so, um, yeah, Emerald City Writers Com Writing Conference, EWCA, Emerald, I don't know, E, <laughs> you know, Emerald City. Um, and uh, anyway, it's a, it's a writing conference, so it's craft and business, and it's just for writers, um, no readers. Um, Anyway, and they offer uh, like a buddy system. And so when you sign up for a conference, go through the conference website and read all the things that they offer because I think that that's probably not uncommon. Um, so they, I don't remember the exact language they use, something like gems or something. Um, but if you are a first time conference attendee, and it doesn't matter where you are in your career, if you've quietly been writing in your you know, office or in your house or whatever for, you know, the last 10 years, you might think, oh, I'm not new, I don't need some, no, if you're new to a conference, they might have a mentor thing, and I, and, and, um, Lori Foster's had the same thing, that, you know, you could find someone who would show you around or even just answer your questions in advance, so, um, so I'm a first-time conference attendee, and because I'm like a complete keener, I'm like, oh, sign me up for everything, including having a mentor. Um, so there's somebody who's going to email me with like tips and tricks for this conference because they've been recently. That's the to be a mentor is just someone who's been recently. That's so, cool. This is the best thing ever. <sighs> yeah, right. Like, like help. You know, <laughs> that that's the one thing. And then the other the other thing is uh, the question was. Uh, you know, what do you do to prepare? Um, and it's, I think that it's really useful to practice your introduction, you know, because that when you sit down next to a stranger, how do you describe yourself? So someone sat down next to me at RTC and they're like, hi, and you are, you are like, I'm Zoe York and I write sexy small town romance, right? And just practice rolling whatever it is that you do off your tongue, like stare in the mirror a few times and... <laughs> So that it just comes out naturally. It's like the it's and and it's such an important um, skill to have because it's like the first step in doing like an elevator pitch, right? And if you're not yet at the point of pitching anybody, but you are going to a conference, introducing yourself is like a little mini pitch. And that's the worst thing for introverts. But if it has to be done, then it has to be done. Yeah, you gotta make gotta make the connections, right? I, I'm just thinking through my head how Xavier's. Little pitch would go with the dinosaur noir. It would just be. <laughs> that would be awesome. It would be awkward. <laughs> and you would be remembered. Yeah, yes. people would not forget you. That's right. You wouldn't even need swag. They'd be like, "Oh, dino porn." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they'd be very disappointed when they like get to the end of the book. There wasn't any porn in this thing. <laughs> he even did the subtle thing where it just went to the curtains. What the. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, I guess on both of them, because it depends on what type of conference you're going to. But I'm, uh, I'm kind of interested in talking a little bit about cost, um, especially for people that are just getting started, which a lot of our audience is. Um, it, cost is a very big issue. So, uh, did you guys budget out ahead of time, and can you guys give us kind of a ballpark of what it would cost to do this? So the, the regional events are usually cheaper than the national events, both in terms of registration, but also they're typically held in more affordable locations. Um, like RWA this year is in New York, and it's in Times Square, so the, you know, the hotel. And RWA, now RWA actually, they always negotiate a really decent hotel rate. That's something, as long as you can get the hotel, as long as you can get the hotel rate, because um, it also sells out. Um, that's something that's good. I've heard 
horror stories about how much RT can cost, um, both in terms of registration fees and hotel. Uh, RT, oh, well, you know, <laughs> pro tip, call the hotel and ask them if you can prepay and they'll knock money off. That's what I did. That's what I do sometimes. What? Yeah, if you prepay before you get there, like a non-refundable, I mean, there's no way you're not going. Um, they, um, the Hyatt, I think, is definitely does that because I did that for RT. And you just you pay before you get there. It's not refundable. I was getting on the plane anyway, so um, they charged my credit card before I got there, and they knocked off like serious cash. So. Um, and that was on top of the conference rate. Nice. So, cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, some of the reader events, not the conferences, the conferences that are for writers, they're usually a pretty significant investment. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how much Emerald City is. Um, I, a couple hundred dollars um, plus airfare and hotel and you know so that's a significant chunk of money um, but the reader events are usually sponsored by authors like the, the dinners and stuff so next year um, I'm sponsoring one of the dinners with five other authors so nobody has to pay for that in their registration fee right it's covered as a write-off by us authors and sometimes we need write-offs so that works for everybody um, so RTC next year, the reader registration is $65, and the author registration I think is $125 or $150, but it's already sold out. So if you want to attend RTC next year, the only way to attend now is as a reader. And that's something else. That's an important um, thing to remember for these reader events is that authors can attend as readers, both Lori Foster and, and RTC. Um, and a lot of the other, you know, single day events. You, if you just want to go and, and, and experience one, I'm going to um, a reader event in San Francisco uh, in August. August 8th, I think. I don't have a calendar in my head. Anyway, it's like the, it's the first full weekend in, in August. Um, and the reader ticket for the day is like $11. So if you just want to go and get your, dip your toe in that social, thing, then there are really in inexpensive ways to do it. Yeah, I went to um, a Louisville, just, it was just a signing, um, two weeks ago, it was, like, it was like $30 for readers to attend, and they, they had a party at night, it was $7, people went to the party, with lunch, a party at night, a VIP thing the night before, so it was really cool for um, for readers, and us authors threw in like $100, <laughs> I think, and, you know, some giveaway stuff, but um, that's that's always fun. That those this signing events sometimes they can you got to know why you're going. Like I would go to Louisville because I went to college there. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily travel to um, Louisville for a signing for the for you know for a ton of reasons. But you got to make sure that the dollars make sense. I was gonna say, is it not a good return on your investment every time? No. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on the signing. But a lot of these smaller ones, you go to meet readers and to, you know, especially if you have some super readers in the area or you know a bunch of people that are going to come in. But mm -hmm. um, it's really easy to feel like, especially as an indie, you have to hit every single event. And you've got to bring a model. And you've got to, you know, bring a thousand books. And, and it's just, and you, you look at it and you're like, I spent $2,000 this weekend. And so... Right. 50 books at $10 a pop, you know, if you're lucky, and, and it didn't, you know, <laughs> yeah. didn't make any money. So it's, mm -hmm. you're not there to make money. You're there for um, the experience, the people, the readers, the pictures, the social media. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you're there for. Yeah. What What's the model for? Like, I've never, <laughs> I don't, I'm not a romance reader, so I don't know. I don't, Is that I like the model from models. your books? Yeah, some people bring their models. They're cover models. Yeah. And they just like stand back there and be do modely things? Or what? Some people bring black, <laughs> some people bring models. I, I, I That's hilarious. Readers like to have their pictures taken with the models. Um, oh, okay. That makes sense. Sometimes they're, they're very interactive. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, nice way to put that. They're super upstanding guys. So there's like, yeah, oh, no, totally. Yeah, yeah. But there's like, I mean, some readers, when I when I say interactive, I don't mean anything X-rated, but there's like, you oh, know, 
<laughs> they're, they're, you know, these are good looking guys, and the readers appreciate that. Oh. Of course. <laughs> readers, please keep Just your hands off the models. <laughs> <laughs> but you Those know, poor guys. It's it's tricky because that can be really distracting. Um, and for the authors who don't bring models, like I don't, I buy stock photos for my covers. I do too. So um, I'm never gonna bring because my guy, like he probably is like in Slovenia or something. His name's Thor. He has no idea that he's on the cover of a book called. That's right. Sleep, oh. please. Um, so anyway, uh, so for me, you know. Like, I wouldn't be able to compete, necessarily, if there were, like, models on either side. But you have to remember that that's not what it's about. It's not a competition. You're about being there and being accessible to the people who are, who are actually interested in you. And it doesn't matter if people are streaming past and they're not interested in you. It's really just about the few people that actually get excited to see. And that was unbelievable. When I was in Ottawa, you know, because there were three people who came to see me. Um, and that I knew, and, like, I brought them necklaces, and that was all exciting. And then there were, like, these complete strangers who are not a part of my Facebook group, and I don't recognize their faces from, like, the pictures on, you know, posting on my page. And they came up, and they said, do you have any copies of Jake's book? And I was like, oh, my God! <laughs> like, you know? That was that was freaky and awesome. And it, so it didn't matter. You know, there were, like, four 400 readers, I think, at the signing. And it doesn't matter that I, I didn't sell books to 300 of them because I sold books to 100 of them. That's a good point. And those people will remember you and they'll buy your other books. Yeah. So, and, you know, sometimes we go to these events where um, I, I look around and I see some uh, people that aren't selling books, but they're also sitting there playing on their, on their cell phones or they're, you know, tying their shoes for three hours. And it just you, you have to make contact because... Readers are there looking for a book, and, and like you're there to meet them. And so like sometimes you just have to stand up. Sometimes you have to stand in front of your table. Or it goes back to that whole smile thing. Because mm -hmm. if you smile at somebody, you're at least going to have a conversation. And you can you can pitch them your book. Um, you know, if they don't buy it, that's okay, because they may get your ebook later. They're going to walk away with your swag with a little heart next to the print of free. So um, it's just... It's all about establishing that relationship. Yeah. And I, do, I was really surprised at how many authors were sitting. And I was like, why, why, are, you, why are you sitting? I've seen get pictures up. of that. And they're like, this is my first conference. And they're sitting there. And I'm like, get up. Get up. And so <laughs> and I think that that just comes from, you know, I was an educator before I was a full-time writer. Um, and, you know, I, I would sometimes have to go to trade shows and, and do that sort of thing. And, um I, like I would just, I would never sit. Like that's just so. I just assumed that that's. I would just stand, and and I do think that it made a difference. I mean, sometimes the signings can be like five or six hours long, and that's kind of crazy. Um, I totally get wanting to. And if somebody comes and they and and you're gonna sign books for them, sit down and sign the books for them. Mm -hmm. You know, like take breaks where you can. But um, but when if if everyone's streaming packs, absolutely stand up. Do you both have like a standard table set up? for these things so that, so that in the next one you go to it's like a set up tear down type of thing I'm so, no I mean I did I've only done the one it was kind of a bit of a mess like I didn't really I was like oh where do I what the see by series or by like hotness I don't know yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a banner and it goes behind me I need a taller banner because my banner was six foot but everybody else's banner was like eight foot and um <laughs> And so eventually I would have a banner. <laughs> yeah. would be you should get models banner. to hold it up higher. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I spent, anytime there wasn't somebody, at, you know, getting a book or whatever, I'd, like, move my books around. And uh, one of, like, a super awesome blogger um, that I love, um, for Romance Ever After, she came up to, like, be my assistant in Louisville, and she was, like, very artistic. She's got an eye for these things, and she was positioning books. But me, I'm just like, oh, piles of books. They look good. <laughs> so, um, you know, some people have very beautiful, uh, like, stone banners that drape off their table, and um, some people like Sharon Hamilton has, I think, uh, like a camouflage 
uh, tablecloth and, uh, you know, if you do like a theme thing, that's super cool. If not, people are still going to come talk to you. As long as you're standing up. <laughs> and not tying your shoe around Facebook. It's like, oh, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm still at the conference. Oh, wait. Foster Heart, the girl, uh, two signs ago, she sat on her, she sat there with her laptop the entire time writing. And then afterwards, oh. she looked at me and she goes, I didn't sell a single book today. And in my head, I thought, well, no kidding. But, um, you know, I just smiled and said, oh, next time, get him. Because, you know, unsolicited advice or whatever. But. She she wrote the entire time. Zoe Zoe has always got a picture. Can you That's guys up. sorry? Can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. So that's my banner from across the room. Someone else took oh, this. Oh, I see that. Yeah. See that. So okay. the name at the top of the banner is really cool, which was totally accidental on my part. Um, but I'm very happy that I did that. When I saw this picture on Facebook and someone just randomly posted it, I was like, oh, look at my name. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting. That's look, that one lady's if you looking look at that other banner that's like kind of mm -hmm. um, in the corner, it's very, it's like a design on top. You want your name on top. Yeah. That's what you want on top, your name. So when people do take those pictures, your name's there. Nice. And it's white. I really like that it's white and clean. It's gorgeous. It looks really good. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that banner. That's from Vistaprint. We'll give them a little bump because they were super mm -hmm. cute. There are, there, is, there, are, there are a bunch of good banner options, particularly if you're in the States. There's one that they do pop-up banners for like 80 bucks. Um, it's a little more expensive to ship to Canada. But, yeah, banner. It's a fantastic investment. And it doesn't need to be, like, I, I, because from my experience working at the university, um, I had it in my head that a roll banner was like five hundred dollars because oh, people no. at the university stupidly spend on them. But then when I looked into my options, I realized sure there are lots of sign companies that'll charge you five hundred dollars. But then there are lots of ones that you can get them for less than a hundred bucks too. I love this print. They're great. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Once you get one done, unless you have <clears throat> some major change, you're gonna use that old one over and over again probably so yes so I've seen some people do roll banners that have or like uh, pull banners that um, like they have like their most recent books like running down the side or like one series and that is that that's kind of time limited right mm -hmm. better to focus on pitching you and your brand and if you have nice tight branding for you like your name font and stuff like that then that's a sign that you'll be able to use even if it's like like my my sign pulls from my Pine Harbor series a little bit, um, but it doesn't say Pine Harbor like all over it. And then at the bottom, it actually lists my series. Turns out the bottom of your banner it doesn't matter. It's because pointless, it's right? I didn't know. I didn't even think about it. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, the bottom of the only like third can be blank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't think about that stuff until you do it, right? That's what's yeah, you do it. Yeah. That was very cool. Do you think uh, these types of conferences, uh, I mean, obviously romance authors, romance genre has this a lot. Do you, but do you think the, all these things would apply to any uh, type of conference? I don't, I don't, I always hear about conferences, and a lot of times it's the romance-centered, uh, so I don't know if, you guys there have heard other... Yeah, there are a couple of mystery ones, right? Like Boucheron is a... I heard that's really good, yeah. I heard that's really good, too. I went to two, um, like, writer general conferences before um, I started doing the RWA thing. And one was, like, a, a writer's pitching conference. And um, it was two days of writing blurbs. It's all it was. And we wrote blurbs, tore them up, wrote blurbs, and they put us in groups of ten, and like it was harsh. And it was it was the best thing I ever did um, at that point in my career. I mean, because, you know, I had manuscripts written, I was pitching, but, um, and actually the point of that conference wasn't even to, you know, indie publish. They were very traditionally focused, and there were a bunch of editors there. Um, so it was interesting to hear their feedback. And then the other conference, um, what I went to was, it was a pitch slam. 
and it was like do as many pitches as you could do in like six hours and you had to sell yourself in a minute and people would be like thumbs up thumbs down and so what, you, what made you think to do that at the beginning that's terrifying because I wanted an agent at the time Oh, okay. I, I didn't, I mean, this is like, what, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I, um, I didn't know enough or anything about indie publishing. I wanted to sell my books. I was writing them like crazy. Um, at the time, I wasn't even necessarily writing romance. And I needed to sell these things because this is what I wanted to do with my life. So I needed an agent. That's all I knew. Um, and I met a ton of contacts. And it was, you know, it's, I loved it because it was, I needed to have that thick skin back then. Like somebody mm -hmm. had to look at me and be like, that's the worst idea I've mm -hmm. ever heard. And for me to be like, you know what? Screw it. Um, mm -hmm. Moving like, on. I remember yeah. the first pitch slam, I was, I just had the first, my first baby. I just had a C-section. I was three weeks outside of a C-section. I ice storm. I was driving the car, I was getting on the ramp on the belt, like spun the car around, kept going, pulled over on the side of the road, was like, do I really want to go to this? I was like 4 a.m., got back on the highway, got to Union Station, like I'm like pumping in the bathroom because I just had a baby. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it was like the worst day. It was, it was just one day. I like left at 4 a.m., came back at 11 p.m. I had never been away from my child before. Like I was crying oh, in the no. bathroom. Like one stall, I was like pumping, yes. like basically, it was like total New York. Get out of the bathroom, like, right? like, and, like and I thought, like, do I want to do this as a career? And I walked out, and I was like, hell yeah, I do. And I got back in line, and I pitched, and had somebody be like, you know what, this is the worst idea. <laughs> the next line, and then somebody said, you know what, hell yeah, give me that, you know, send it to me. And just to like have that, I don't cry over one star reviews. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't wham wham when somebody says, oh, whatever's not happening. You know, like, I move on. And I think a lot of it is because, like, I was, you know, drugged through the coals because I wanted it badly. And and I'm glad I did that. And I hope those conferences are still happening because people need them. You need to have a little bit of rejection. <laughs> <sighs> and there's something about the honesty of face-to-face -face feedback that we don't get online. It is too easy today to fool yourself into thinking that you're good enough, that this is good enough, right? Because you might be good enough, but what you're currently working on might need another draft, you know? Mm -hmm. And right. it's in the in with the autonomy of the internet, you can kid yourself into thinking that it's ready, that you're ready. Um, and That's it's much really harder. true. Yeah. It's much harder to so I met a couple of people and I, I hope they're not watching tonight. Uh, I'm sure they're not. Um, I met a couple of people in Ottawa who were kidding themselves, 100%. And those are kind of awkward conversations, you know? Like, so they, so this one, one person says to me, I'm really excited because I'm going to sell five books to a publisher. And I'm like, wow, that's a huge deal. Are you getting an advance? And they said, no. And the look on my face, like, I didn't even try and pretend that that was acceptable. Oh, it's not acceptable. And, she, and I could see that my reaction was registering. That's a conversation that you don't have on the Internet, but you have it in real life, you know? Um, and she'll take that with her. She'll be like, this one lady? You know, I don't know whether or not, like, maybe she's going to go ahead with that deal. Maybe she'll change her mind. Maybe she'll learn from it. I don't know. But... There, you can have conversations in real life, and then there's also the tone thing, right? That after I give that, like, oh, that sounds like a bad deal, then we can keep talking, and you don't, like, X out of the chat room and run mm -hmm. away and cry, right? Like, we can get to a productive place or something. Um, and, and then there's also the, the, the crazy eye-opening to all the possibility. Like, so I'm, I do writing sprints in a chat room, um, with a whole bunch of people from Romance Divas. And a bunch of them went to RT last year. And so they go to RT, and they come back right after RT. Not RT this year, but, like, 2014. RT 2014. And I say RT 2014 was the, that was the, the conference where 
traditionally published authors finally realized that self-publishing was probably better and mm -hmm. at least more lucrative because they all came flooding back into chat and they're like, hang on a second, you can get rich doing this thing? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, come on, where have you been? But they were busy, you know, and they, and they were kidding themselves. And they went to RT and they finally got it because it was right in front of them because they couldn't kid themselves anymore. Wow. That's very cool. Uh, Jason had one question, I think it was. Um, so if you could only attend one conference a year, would you focus on a reader-centric conference or a writer-centric conference? Depends where you are in your career. It's the same answer that Kristen gave before. I think if you're um, okay, new, mm -hmm. I would go to a writer-centric conference because you have to have a good craft. I mean, if you're not trying to improve your craft every day, then then you're never going to be long term. Mm -hmm. And if you um, aren't building those relationships and meeting those people that you can cross promo with, it doesn't matter how many you know reader events. You know, what are you going to meet? Like ten readers of an event that are going to actually remember you. You know, you need you need other networks, and um, that just pays off. You gotta think long term. Like everything is a business decision. What is going to run your business long term through the fiscal year, through next year? So while 10 readers, 20 readers, 50 readers are great, even if they sell through your entire series, how much money is that gonna net you? Like what is your income going to be from those people versus the ability to, to work with somebody else that has, you know, a Facebook network? That has the ability to put you on a podcast where you could possibly, you know, you know. So did we? We probably met via this podcast last year. I mean, I don't even know that we. Met. But you know, so that is that is how these these things work. And I I would say until you're super far along, um, you know, you gotta you gotta focus on the the networks that you're building. Yeah, and there's also the one conference that we haven't talked about because I don't think Kristen that you've been and I haven't been yet, but it's on my list is Nink. <gasps> Love it! Oh, that's Ooh. the holy grail. That's, <laughs> that's the holy grail, grail conference. right? But the thing is that like it, I'm not sure that I'm quite at the point where I'll get you the most out of it. Right? Yeah. That I, I, I would be this year. But now I'm going to Emerald City, so I'm definitely going to Nink next year. So it's like this um it's like this tier there that's a like a ladder of conferences, right? So it's like local one, reader event, RWA, RT, Nink, right? Nink is awesome. like, yeah, and, and really oh. you probably want to rotate. Once you once you get hit the national level, you probably want to like every year go RWA or RT or Nink and then like keep rotating. It's hard to go to all of them. It, that's the other thing that we haven't talked about. I'm doing all three this year. Are you hitting all three this year? Oh, okay. yeah. I did RT. I presented at RT. I'm presenting at RWA, and I'm going to Nink, and I am soaking up every single thing. Yeah. And it was interesting to see the dynamic there, um, particularly the industry legends, um, their reactions versus the people that are doing things right now. Um, it's very, it was very educational. It was very, um, I mean, I, that conference is so laid back. I wore flip-flops the entire time. I'm like, oh, you know, just like some yeah. weirdo skirt. Um, it's on the beach. I brought the baby. Like, I had somebody, you know, taking care of him. I mean, it was just, it was just super laid back. And it was, there wasn't any, what, what's a tweeter? It wasn't any um, <laughs> should should we um, no, which is totally a legitimate question. But yeah. after a certain period of time, you need to to section off and like get down to the nitty gritty. Like, what do I do after twelve books in a series? How, what options do I take? You know, do do I do foreign? Do I go after audio? Do I do I translate? And the night owl sessions are you know they pick a topic. It's like eleven o'clock or something like that, and people just get together and they just. Talk it out. You know, what do we do about German translations? What do you do? You do you spend money on a Spanish translation? Do you how do you write a marketing plan for audiobooks? Like it's super high level stuff for indies, and it was phenomenal. Like I just cannot say that I love that conference anymore. I mean, just ah, I loved it. I want you to go. 
Um, one option, another option for people who can't afford to go or aren't sure if a conference is for them, this year, watch that conference on Twitter. So last year, um, Nink, I followed a lot of people and a lot of different hashtags that people were uh, from people who, who were at Nink. And there's some really amazing things that get documented on Twitter mm -hmm. while they're happening. So <laughs> there was one presentation last year at Nink where the publisher at Sourcebooks said that authors don't care about getting paid, they get they care about being published. And the authors in the room tore her to bits, both verbally in the room, but also on Twitter. They were live tweeting the whole session. Um, and so you can you can see glimpses, right? And you can decide, is this the type of conversation that I wish I was having in person? Then that's the conference that you need to be saving for and going to the following year. They're always going to be there the following year, so it's okay. Like I don't feel bad about not going to the big ones this year. They'll be there next year. I have little kids, and I'm in Canada, so for me, like travel is a little bit harder. Um, flights are way more expensive um, and not as convenient. You know, like I, it's, I'm, it's not a one flight for me to anywhere, <laughs> so it's you know it's a full day of travel to go anywhere, um, and it's okay. You know, there are lots of really successful authors who get those connections just online and and by making phone calls, you know, like once you get to a certain level, you can get on the phone with, with the reps from the retailers. It's not quite the same thing, but it's okay. Um, and it will always be there. It will always be awesome, and I'll always, like, in, in three weeks, I'm going to wish that I was in New York for RWA, but I made the decision not to go for a reason, too, you know? And next year, so next year is going to be my year of the big national conferences. And probably the year after that I might take a break because the other reality is that travel con conference travel takes up a surprising chunk of time. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, like if it takes five days out of your month, then that's like 25% of your writing time. Like Plus that's... all of the ordering stuff and packing. And yeah, I watch them on Facebook and everyone's like, do what? There's a lot of administrative stuff that comes with mm -hmm. it, I, and that just kind of goes with the writing career. Like the further along that you you move, the the more business stuff you have, and it's uh it's surprising to me how much time is spent doing um business stuff, talking to CPAs or talking to a lawyer, or talking to a translator, like not writing. You know, last year I just <laughs> wrote. Now it's yeah. Ooh, that may be another good one to have you back on for and talk about more on the business side of it because like you say it's, it's, it's like you're, you're presenting right but it it's not the most exciting stuff but um, something that you have to do have to tackle I could listen yeah. to that stuff all day because that that's the stuff that terrifies me like I'm gonna do it wrong so I just don't go to the next level I'm like nah, I just I just won't write that other book because that <laughs> seems too hard like, I, I don't I don't want to go any further than this it's rewarding. No, no, no. It's it's very rewarding to build your own business like that. Um, you know, I like I I worked all week. Um, it's the first week that I've had five days of childcare um, in almost a month, and I worked all week and I didn't write a single word. Like I had a lot of other stuff to catch up on. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of catch up after conferences. Mm. Point. Well, we've uh, we burned through the hour already, and it, like, like Michelle said before, I think in the comments, like we could listen to you guys talk forever. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, like I had like six more questions, but I knew Wade was going to call time, so. <laughs> maybe, so maybe we need to have you guys back on again if you wouldn't mind. So. Uh, well, they're not going to say no on air, so. Yeah, no, that's, why, that's why I always ask. <laughs> oh, don't give away my secrets, Michelle. Come on. <laughs> Thank you both. Really appreciate it, though. It was, it was that was awesome. Very insightful, and uh, thanks for taking the time to share with our audience. We do appreciate it very much. So, uh, yeah, after party, if uh, anybody wants to, maybe we'll have Xavier throw up a link. Uh, I don't know if Kristen and, and Zoe can stick around, but if you guys can for a little bit, I'll do a little bit after party. Um, uh, hopefully, no kids wake up crying or anything. Um, <laughs> next week is our uh, special 100th episode. I want to remind everybody, please try to tune in live if you can. Put it on your calendars uh, for next week. Uh, we're going to pull a pe couple of people just randomly out of the audience to, to be on the show. 
uh, talk about some history, talk about whatever we actually want. Erica Conroy is going to be on uh, doing some interviewing type stuff, so uh, hopefully everybody can come by and check that out next week. Yeah, yeah she's going to put us on the spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she is probably going to put us on the spot a little bit, she's too. She's going to say boobs a lot. <laughs> yeah, in that lovely New Zealand accent. Mm-hmm. Yes, which makes it sound even better. So. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, thanks to everybody watching live tonight and all your comments and uh, questions. We'd appreciate that very much. Remember, give us a quick little review, except for Kate Morgan because she's good to go. But everybody else, a quick review over on iTunes and uh, share us around on the social media circuit. We would really, really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, Michelle, Xavier, anything else? Dad, miss anything? No. No? Okay. Oh, we're good. Uh, Xavier, you always have something to say, though, at the end. I know you do. I do. <laughs> good night, internets.